Hello, this is Jack Miller. I hope you're having a good day. I wanted to make this video, this short video, to talk about why I believe real estate is a fantastic inflation hedge. And I'm going to show you um, it from different sides, from rent increases, from property value increases, from mortgage pay down, but ultimately why real estate's a fantastic investment in all markets, whether it be in this market or the market 10 years ago or the market 10 years from now, it doesn't really matter. So let's get right into it. I have to tell you first, a kind of funny, this is my third attempt because I screwed up the screen sharing on the other two attempts. So hopefully this will work this time. So, okay, so hopefully if I'm doing this right, you are seeing a very simple spreadsheet. And I kept, it, kept this very simple uh, spreadsheet that I did yesterday. And all it's talking, there's really three tabs. There's the master, which is basically the facts of the deal. There's the rent increase and the amortization. And there's some stuff here, which I'm purposely going to hide. Uh, and we'll talk about it in a few minutes. So uh, I tried to do this and I wanna prove out mathematically why I believe real estate's a fantastic investment. Um, you know, most people who are watching this and most people in today's market have not experienced uh, tremendous inflation and they haven't experienced tremendous interest rate increases. You know, when I, I'm almost 60, I'll be 60 in a couple of weeks when I, I'm sorry, a couple of months when I started, uh, rates were 15 and three quarters. And, you know, I've experienced it all. So, you know, people are going to be stunned when all of a sudden rates start to creep up. And they're freaking out over 25 basis points or 75 basis points. But it's really, I don't believe it's, it, 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 I don't want to say it's meaningless. It all has an offset and comes out in the wash. So, you know, it's really not an excuse not to buy real estate. I think by the end of this, you will love buying real estate. And this is free. I'm not charging a penny. I don't even, I don't sell anything uh, for this. It's just because I love it. So I'm going to, let's start jumping in with the numbers. Uh, so I'm going to assume, uh, one more thing. I'm using a million dollars as a number to buy a piece of property. If you it could be 10 million for you, it could be a half a million, or it could be a hundred thousand. The principles are the same. You do what you can afford, but let's play it out with my numbers. And you, and I think at the end, you'll see real estate is literally the best hedge against inflation. Some people argue it's the S&P index. I, I don't want to make that argument or defend that way above my pay grade. So let's jump right into the fun stuff. So I'm going to figure today you can get a decent property for a six and a half cap rate. So I use a six and a half cap rate. And I'm going to assume I, I want to look at this just day one and then see how it progresses over time that I buy a property for a million bucks. I like 75% leverage. I personally like lower leverage, but let's use 75% average leverage, I think today. So I'm going to borrow 750 grand from my local bank. And uh, I'm going to put 250,000 as a down payment. And I just figured a 5% closing cost, that average, some cities and states are more depending if they have transfer tax, mortgage tax, but you can play with the numbers. So right away, I have a cash investment of 300,000. I'm leaving off, by the way, on this uh, depreciation and certain things like that. I'm keeping this at a very, very high level. You can do spreadsheets and you can download them for free, which will be much more in detail and much more accurate. I just wanna prove a point. So again, uh, it, it, it's not exact, um, or you can get much more detail. My point is not to go into the details too much, but to get you on thinking about the general concept on the big picture. Uh, so right away, you have a $300,000 investment. I always urge you to have big reserves because big reserves are protection over bad stuff. And over a period of time, you're going to have bad stuff happen. You're going to have rates go up, rates go down. Uh, we just are coming off COVID where you had eviction moratoriums. There's always something bad right around the corner. So big cash reserves is excellent protection and keeps you um, wealth preservation in line and makes this generational wealth building, which I think real estate is. So I would urge big reserves, but I didn't factor that in. You could deal with that separately. I'm figuring a 4% interest rate you can borrow from a bank today, give or take. Uh, so very simple. Here's the math. I'm highlighting it. You know, you borrow 750000 at 4%. Your, your interest costs, what did I do? I screwed something up there. You're borrowing money and it's costing you 30000 a year interest. Then I said, okay, uh, what's the principal and in interest? I'm using a 20-year self-amortizing deals. Some people like 30 years. Some people like interest only. I personally like to pay down principal. The principal, the, 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 if you see here, the payment starts out at $4,500 a month. So the payment's $54,000 a year. So that's what I use. So I'm also using here, the next figure is the net cash flow after expense. 
topic of another time. I've made another video on uh, NOI and how to calculate NOI. There's a difference between gross and net, but I'm figuring net for this purposes. So in this case, you'll figure, you'll see later on when I use the gross, I use a higher number, but this is the net NOI, the net expenses after operational expenses, not the interest expense, 65,000. Aha, uh -huh, a six and a half cap rate. That's how I get the 65,000. If you change the cap rate, this number changes, but just to get the point. So right away, we have 65,000 in income and we have 54,000 in um, mortgage payment. So right away, we have a free cash flow of about 10,000 a year or do it on a percentage basis, about 3% of your investment, not too exciting, kind of boring, 3%. And you have to work on real estate. It's a lot of aggravation. You're personally guaranteeing it in most cases. 3% certainly not exciting off the bat, but let's see where it goes. You know, where it goes is the exciting part. Okay, I figure you're going to pay principal down by 25000 the first year. Where do I figure that? I go to my third tab. And again, I'm using a very basic uh, amortization schedule. You could download them offline. And, you know, the payment again, 5400 So let's just do what the first very simple here. 12 years worth of payments, you see are about 25 grand a year. So, so are you really paying down the 25,000 or is your tenant paying down the 25,000? So think about at the end of the year, instead of owing 750,000, you're gonna owe 725,000 and that money isn't coming from you, it's coming from the rents. So it's forced savings. The tenant is paying down you back your loan. It's an unbelievable concept. It's the best concept, one of the best concepts in the world. The tenant every month is paying back money that you owe. So assuming the property stays in value, now if you have to sell when it's a deflationary period like 08 to 011, you're in trouble. It may not be enough. But again, if you, I'm basing this on that you're going to hold the property for five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. You're going to leave it on to your kids and they're going to leave it on to their kids. And it's really generational wealth building. Um, so 25,000 is being paid back. So really the, the owner's benefit is the $10,000 free cash flow plus the 25,000. You have a $35,000 first year return. Well, now your return is 12%. Again, not factoring in depreciation or anything else, starts to get a little more exciting here. Starts to get a little more exciting. 12%, big difference from 3%, big difference from 3%. And if you're going to hold the property a long time, that's how you have to look at it. Now, what causes real estate to go up? It, it's a few things. Uh, the two big ones are general inflation. So if you're living in a house, it's not rented out, you know, it's just general inflation. I usually like to use, in my own mind, a 3% number. You know, right now we're in an inflationary period. The rates are very low. The past five years, it's been a heck of a lot more than 3%. You're seeing some areas, 15, 20%, just crazy numbers. But again, I'm using conservative numbers over a long period. I want to look at this over a 10, 15, 20 year period. And I'm going to use that 3% number. You'll see in my numbers. And it's increased rents. And again, let's jump to that for a second. So, Remember here, we had a net rent of 65,000. So what I did was I just said, ballpark gross rent is 85,000, 20,000 in expenses. Seems about right. You can play with the numbers, make them a little higher, a little lower. And I used day one, uh, I said, every year we're gonna raise the rents 3%. Now, again, some years you do higher, some years you do lower. If you get a C, if you build in there 3% plus CPI, you may get higher some years, but I figured 3%, let's use this to see where this goes. I apologize. Um, and so you see very small increases. You know, what's 3% a year? Nothing. 3% is boring. You're going to say, Miller, you suck if you can only do 3%. I'm going to tell you why I think 3% or, again, it'll be higher in some years, lower is another, but is a big number over time because compounding, what do I say? Compounding is the ninth wonder of the world or something like that. So the first year you get a $3,000 raise, next year a $3,000, and it keeps going up. So let's look at year 10, that $85,000 rent now is $110,000. Well, you're doing the same work. You made the same investment. It just keeps going up. Let's look, let's really focus on year 20 because I want my kids to have this. I want my grandkids to have this. I want this to be a generational building. I want to be able to buy a property when I'm 22 or 24, or 25 and say, this is my retirement income. So let's look at that. So, you know, 3%, you know, I start off getting 85,000. And in year 20, I'm getting 150 grand. That's not chopped liver. That's a huge increase. 
a huge increase. And I'm only using 3%. You may say, Jack, you suck it if you can only deliver 3% increases. You know, I, I could do that in my sleep. Uh, okay, let's use a 4%. So remember that number of 150? 4% is now 179, 180, and a $30,000 difference by changing it 1%. If you change it to 5%, it's 214. Look at the huge differences by compounding effects over time. So the, don't ignore compounding in real estate because that's a huge, a huge deal. Small increases over a period of a long time is has a huge effect. So the key, you'll see the, the theme of this is buy good real estate, whether it be one piece a year, two pieces a year, three pieces a year, whatever you can do and take 20 year loans. And the number one key is don't die. Don't die and don't screw it up. If you don't die, you don't screw it up, you'll be wealthy. So you see how here it goes up. And remember, this is the this is how the value is determined by these the NOI. So every dollar it goes up you're getting a proportionate cap rate. So for example, I use the six and a half cap rate. So if I raise rent by a dollar and when I sell it, if the cap rate's the same, you know, I get six and a half dollars for every dollar. So it's, it's a huge multiply effect. So let's keep going on. So let's look now. So this is day one and let's expand this out. I really should know how to do this, but I'm not too computer savvy. So I got to kind of do it the manual way. I missed something here, but okay. So let's do day. So let's now look at 10 years. Okay. I've owned this property for 10 years. Now, again, my numbers for all these people who are going to leave comments. They're not exact because you're getting income every year, but I just wanted to give you a snapshot in time. So at the end of the, te the 10 years, now the rent is no longer 65,000 or the net rent is no longer 65,000. It's about 111,000. So 111,000. Now I still have the same mortgage payment unless I refinanced. Okay, so my cash flow now is fifty-six thousand. So it goes from ten thousand to fifty-six thousand, or an eighteen, almost nineteen percent return. That's something. Three percent is nothing to be excited about. But in ten years, an eighteen percent or nineteen percent return is fantastic. That's how you get wealthy. Again, not exactly accurate because every year you're taking money back. So you're you really, it should be done on a yearly basis. And really what should happen is you should look at the market value today to readjust your numbers. But again, I just wanted to give general big concepts. Let's keep going. Um, again, I'm paying back. Oh, this is it, right. It says I'm paying back $20,000 a year in uh, principal. And the first year is 25. Again, I screwed up. Let's see what I'm paying back. I'll show you how you do it real quick. So let's do year 20, uh, 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 which is 120 months. I'm paying back 40,000 in principle. So let's change that. Hey, Jack, screw up. So now I'm paying back. So I'm getting the 56,000 in cash, but every year the tenant's paying back my debt of 40,000. So let's see what's my debt at the end of the 20 years. So at the end of the, on the 120th month, my debt was at 750. Now it's about 550. It was paid down by 200,000. And you'll see what that keeps, what that does. So now my total return is the 56,000 plus the, the 40,000 and 96,000 dollar return or a 32% yield. Fantastic. That's what dreams are made of. So in 10 years, you're looking like a hero. Now, remember, during the 10 years, you're going to have periods, rates are going to go up, rates are going to come down. It, 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 but it's all matched because when the, the leasing rates go up, leasing rates come down, it all over time works itself out in the wash. So, you know, it's impossible to time the market. You know, people are saying today and today is, uh, you know, early 2022, oh, prices are so high. Prices are high because rates are low. The truth is now's the time to buy. Now's always the time to buy. And a good equation I tell people, think about, you know, if, if you're 40 or 50 and your parents bought a home and they're 19, let's say they bought a home for 20,000 bucks or 22,000, and they sold it for 500,000 now. The truth is, what's the difference if they pay 20,000 or 22,000 when they're selling it for 500,000 20 years later? It really doesn't matter because it, it comes out in the wash. So what those people who are trying to time the market all the time, really what happens is, is they're outsmarting themselves. They wind up losing out on the market. 
to be candid with you. So my comment to you is find something good that's fairly priced, get good debt on it, make sure that's low leveraged and you'll don't die and you'll be wealthy. So let's keep going on. Um, so let's keep going to year 20. Remember, I took a 20 year loan. So year 20, now, now my rent went from six net, net rent from 65,000 to it's almost 150,000, 149,000. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. Just natural inflation takes its time. And every year, remember, I only used a 3% increase. 3% increase is generally low. Most people tell you you're going to get 7% or 5%. I'm crazy. I want to be conservative. I use the low number. So now my key free cash was 94,000. That's some real money. Now we're talking, you know, you're approaching 100,000 in free cash flow. That's, that's serious money. You could do a lot. Again, if I'm using my original number, that's a 32% cash on cash yield. That's unbelievable. I'm paying back $57,000 in debt. My debt at the end of the 20th year is zero. My return on initial investment is 50% annually. But year 21, it's even better because there's no debt. So really, if you think about year 21, what happens is, it's all profit. I'm getting 150,000 or 149,000 in, no mortgage to pay. Now, that doesn't happen a lot because what happens is people need money to live. You know, when you sell a property, you can do a 1031, but sometimes there's nothing to roll into. But, uh, or you sell, you have to pay capital gains tax. But a great way to re get cash is to refinance. So these numbers change. My whole point is to show that real estate. If you buy good quality real estate at a fair price, it doesn't have to be a deal, good quality real estate, over time, this is going to be wealth building for you. You're going to be able to make enough money to retire on, or it's going to be generational. It's more than wealth building. It can be generational wealth building if you buy right. So again, I wanted to prove this out to you. Again, I purposely used very simplistic spreadsheets. There's, we have, and everyone has much more complicated spreadsheets on there, which will give you really a truer picture of it. But I wanted to drive home a point. I'll stop sharing my screen. Hopefully this works. Um, hope, I wanted to drive home a point that real estate, almost in any market, is a good deal because what happens is the, the interest rates change, the market change, you're going to have years of high inflation or high rents. Then you're going to have, you may have some years of where you're going to have rent compression, where you're going to be able to get lower rents. But over time, and that's why I use a 2010, 20 year period, you're going to have a mixture. You're going to have some highs and lows, but over time it levels out. And I personally believe that real estate is a fantastic generational wealth building and generation, generational building investment over time. So I hope I didn't drag on too long. Uh, if, you, if you like what I say, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments. I'll certainly answer them. If you have any critiques, I'll certainly respect that and leave that. And I know I le left a lot of stuff off and kept, kept it very, very simplistic. Um, maybe I'll make a much more detailed one in time when I have the time. Anyway, thank you very much. Like the YouTube channel, leave your comments, have a fantastic day and buy some good quality real estate. Don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. Buy something decent. Even if you, if you pay a little more, you pay a little less over a long time horizon, you'll do fine. Remember the most important thing, buy good stuff and don't die. The last one is the most important thing. Have a fantastic day.